Hi, this is Jake from Optimus Futures, and in this video, I'll be bringing you through a basic rundown and tutorial of Bookmap and its most popular features. So starting off here, as you can see, it does look like there is a lot going on, but it's actually pretty straightforward in a very objective view of the marketplace. So basically what we're looking at here is the historical best bid and offer where volume transacted on the best bid and offer. So we're also looking at the evolution of the limit order book where traders were lining up to deal and trade at specific price levels. So you can actually get that point of view based off of what is currently indicating in our heat map to our left, the chart, our historical chart that is, for the E-mini S&P 500. And on the right side, we do have our dome, our current order book, time and sales, and session range volume profile. So to simplify things a bit, let's start to break it down into basic elements. So to do that, I'll be taking off a couple features here on our historical chart. This can be done under the configure visible component section. And from here, we can begin to adjust our historical chart to reflect a view that we'd like to view. So in my circumstances, I may take off volume dots, volume bars. I'll keep the bed best bid and ask as well as buy and sell orders. But for this example here, I'll be taking off indicators as well as the heat map and extended view as well. So now as you can see here, we actually have a pretty straightforward chart now and we can begin to proceed to the rest of the tutorial. So now that we've cleaned things up, what we're actually looking at here is a book map of a historical view essentially of the market. So typically down here, if you have it activated, you'll find yourself an indicator panel located down at the bottom. Now over here in the current market, anything to the right of this white vertical line here, this vertical rectangle per se, this is your current market window. And what we're looking at is the historical best bid, which is represented by the green line. And then we also have the offer, which is represented by the red line. So again, the dash green line here that you constantly see fluctuating, that represents the best bid. And again, the dash red line represents the best offer. And you'll also see a number located to either our bid or our ask lines. Now this number here represents the last traded volume on the best bidder offer to the right. Now we also have our price ladder as well, as you can see, located to the right of our current market history. And it's actually pretty neat in the fact that it does line up. The price levels of our dome here in our price ladder do line up with the fluctuating historical chart. So you do get a good sense of where the current bid and offer is at due to the fact that the charts are lined up with one another. Okay, so now moving on to the dome, there is one feature that I would like to point out on the chart. And I have already mentioned it, but I haven't mentioned it in the aspect of how it relates to the dome. So again, we do have our two dashed lines here in the current market. Again, one, the green line representing our best bid and our red representing our best offer. Now, as you can see, our dashed lines here do line up with our price levels on our dome. And if you take these lines and measure your depth up into the white horizontal lines, there is one for the offer side and one for the bid side. This actually measures the depth of either the offer side or the bid side. So as you can see, if we zoom in just a bit on our dome, the numbers here populating within our depth are actually the mar market participants in the live market providing liquidity to our contracts. So in the example of our offer side here in red, 
these are actually the sellers at the specific price levels. And again, the depth can be measured from our red dash line here up into this white horizontal line. And these lines do trail, so as the market does fluctuate, you'll see these white lines fluctuate as well. As well as the market participants and the liquidity at each price level. Now if we take it on the opposite hand and we start with our bid, we can measure our bid market depth from the green dashed line all the way down into the white horizontal line here. This is showing our bid market depth. Now once again, the numbers populating within these bars here are the buyers lining up with their limit orders, providing liquidity at these specific price levels to buy. And we can see these numbers change constantly all day long. Liquidity is added and pulled within the market. Now the field we've been focusing on here is the current order book, but it is actually possible to change the fields of our dome here on bookmap. So if you give this column a right click, you can actually format the column to your liking. As you can see here, we do have some quick options to change around. So if I needed to, I can change this to a volume, the current volume profile or the chart range volume profile. There's a trades counter. We have a quotes counter as well. And then we have a quotes delta. Now you can also create custom notes for our fields. And we also have a time and sales field, which is by default the center column of our dome. Now right clicking, we can go back to current order book. And if we like, we can format the column. And we can actually adjust some visible options here. So we can change our column into an aggregate column. We can display bars only. We can display numbers only. And then we can split our display if we'd like. So our bid on one side and our offering on the other. If for whatever reason you'd like to inverse your display. And then we can set it to how we'd like our display aligned. There's a bunch of customization option, options here to play with. So please keep that in mind when using the bookmap dome. One option that you will not see on this video is our live trading dome. This allows you to trade essentially directly from the bookmap dome. Unfortunately, the version we running are running will not allow us to place live trades on bookmap. So this is purely for analytical purposes, our version of bookmap. But again, it is possible to place live trades through the dome. All you would need to do is right click the field as I just stated. And then you can enter in a column if you'd like. And then from there, you can configure your dome to make it a trading dome. And you'll see that option on the global plus version of bookmap. Now moving over to the right here, we do have a time and sales window. And this functions as a typical time and sales window might function. You can filter by all or by buy or just sells. And then you can set a min or a max size for your time and sales window. Now finally on our dome or the right hand side of our bookmap platform here, we do have the session range volume profile. This essentially just shows you the volume of trades at the different price levels in the market. So if the current order book does not suffice for you, you can see the current volume of trades. And again, this is constantly fluctuating and is a live representation of the current market. All right, so now that we've taken a look at essentially the entire right hand portion of bookmap, which does function as the dome, let's apply what we learned and head back to our chart and start to make more sense of things. So if we head back to configure visible components, and let's say now we add our volume dots in. If we zoom in just a bit, you can now start to make sense of what the volume dots represent and what they mean. In coordination with our session range volume profile in our current order book, we're actually able to get a pretty good visual representation of the current volume at each price level. 
So if we extend out here and look at the current volume dots for the various price levels in which they match up, you'll see, for example, where my mouse is currently hovering over, that there's just a lot more volume actually represented on the offer side of the market compared to our bid side. And once again, the colors remain uniform. Green represents the bid in the market, while red represents the offer. So as you can see here, there are essentially volume dots for each of the major price levels. And if we take a look at the dots and compare them to the volume profile window, they do match up quite nicely. So this is a good visual representation of the current market or the volume in at the current price levels of the market. Now continuing to add some of the visual components that we did take away before, the one that we just added now is volume bars, which as you can see shows in the bottom portion of our chart here. Again, this is another great representation of volume, but now it works more on a vertical basis. And as you can see here, you're able to get a pretty good viewpoint of the volume represented as bars now towards the bottom of our chart. So for each price level, you'll see how the volume for the contract at the price levels fluctuates. This more in line goes with time rather than price levels. But again, you can see where the current price level is matched up with the current price and then compare it to the volume in our volume profile window. All right, so let's actually add those last couple configurable visible components back to our chart and let's go over those. So the last two we have remaining our heat map and the extended version of the heat map. So this grayscale actually represents the liquidity in the current market. And if we take a look back at our order book over here, we can actually see that the liquidity and the participants lining up to trade, which is the numbers within our order book here, actually line up with the heat map here. Now again, these numbers are given a graphical representation here in the live window, which is our heat map. So essentially what you're looking at is the areas of brightest portions here within our heat map, the brightest lines, so essentially the white lines. This represents a high level of liquidity. So if we take a look at one of our brightest lines here, which actually just changed in front of our eyes, but the level at 2479.50, the white line does show a ton of liquidity at this current portion. And we're actually starting to receive a lot of liquidity right now. As you can see, our heat map lines are a solid white for this price level. Now on the other turn, you'll see the darker lines actually show less liquidity in the market. So the darker, the less liquid. Now you can see there are bits and pieces along our heat map here that do show striations, we could call them, where there is a lot of fluctuation in the color levels or the liquidity does tend to fluctuate quite a lot. Now this is essentially liquidity being pulled or added in various areas within our heat map. So all in all, the heat map is great because it actually represents the liquidity in the market on a visual level. We're able to tell as our heat map gets brighter, it gains liquidity, and as it gets darker, the liquidity is being pulled out of the market. So essentially, we can start to see how price and volume starts to react in relate here with liquidity in the auction process of participants providing their limit orders at these areas in conjunction with our current order book and our volume profile dome section. Thanks for watching. If this video helped, feel free to give it a thumbs up. If you have any further questions, don't hesitate to give us a call or send us an email. Follow us on Twitter, Facebook, and don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more informative content related to the futures market.